ven vas a hablar a Praise the Lord, everybody. We certainly do give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endured forever. Brother Duru, can you turn this mic up? We certainly thank God for his grace and his mercy and his love and his kindness that he has shown toward us. Truly, if it had not been for the Lord who is on our side, there's no telling where we would be. That's awesome. Thank you. And as we get ready to go before the Lord in prayer, uh, that's good. It just turned down just a little bit. Uh, as we get ready to go before the Lord in prayer, that's excellent. Uh, we certainly do thank God uh, for each and every soul that is here, gathered with, together to hear uh, on this day. And we certainly do praise God for his grace and his mercy, his love and his kindness that he has shown toward us. Amen. Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord? Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord? Uh, like David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. The scripture says, let us enter in his gates with thanksgiving and enter in his courts with praise. So as we get ready to go before the Lord in our praise and our worship, uh, let us uh, go before the Lord in prayer. Uh, if you have a particular prayer request, you can certainly let it be known at this time. Certainly, we do want to pray for our, our nation and our states and our city. We want to pray for individual houses. Let us pray for the vision and the mission of Christian ministries of the Apostolic Faith Church. And as we see the day approaching, let us gird the loins of even our own mind. Amen. As we see the time approaching. Amen. Jesus is soon to come, and let us get our hearts and our minds ready for his return. Amen? Thank you, Lord. Yeah, we want to, yes, oh, I'm sorry. Amen. Remember, Sister Priscilla, amen, in your prayers that the Lord will continue to touch her. Amen. And bless her. Uh, Deacon Fields. Amen. Let us remember Sister Chapman, that the Lord will touch her body and grant her great stabilization. Mm. Amen. Let us remember the Pharaoh family. They, they are ones in Pittsburgh. All right. Let us remember them in a mighty way, in a mighty way. Thank you, Lord. We serve a mighty God. 
We serve a mighty God. And nobody is exempt from tests and trials and tribulation and sickness and disease. But it's good to have the Lord on your side. Amen. Thank you, Lord. It's good to know where to call and who to call because the Lord is there to help us and to aid us. He's looking for somebody to show himself mighty. He's looking for somebody to show himself strong in. Though we're not exempt from these things, we can, uh, by his grace and by his mercy, manifest greatness and, and be able to go through what we go through with grace. Go through what we go through with strength. Go through what we go through through faith. Amen? Let the church stand. Saints, don't stop praying, for the Lord is nigh. Saints, don't stop praying, he'll hear your cry. For the Lord has promised, and his word is true. Just keep on praying, he'll answer you. Saints, don't stop praying, for the Lord is nigh. Saints, don't stop praying. He'll hear your cry. For the Lord has promised, and his word is true. Just keep on praying. He'll answer you. Saints, don't stop praying. For the Lord is nigh. Saints, don't stop praying. He'll hear your cry. For the Lord has promised, and his word is true. Just keep on praying, he'll answer you. Let every heart pray, O oh, gracious Father, in the precious and mighty name of Jesus. We come boldly to the throne of grace that we might obtain mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. We certainly do thank you, Lord, for your goodness. We thank you, Lord, for how you have blessed each and every soul that is here on today. We ask you, Lord, that you continue to give us strength, give us grace, give us mercy. Look, Lord, we ask you to look upon our service, look upon our worship, look upon our praise as we magnify and lift up your holy and precious name. We ask you, Lord, that you look upon each and every request that's been made known to you, Lord. We make these requests with humble, with humble submission unto you. Lord, hear our humble cry. Lord, we ask you to move by your power, move by your might, Bind the hand of the adversary, the enemy. And Lord, as we go forward in your name, we ask you, Lord, that you put a hedge of protection about us. Protect us from danger, seen and unseen, in the name of Jesus. As we lift you up and give you glory, give you honor and praise, be in our midst on today. Magnify, Lord. Manifest your presence. Manifest your power. Lord, show forth your miracle signs and wonders in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' precious and mighty name, amen and amen. And as you remain standing, thank you, Lord. We want you to turn with us to the book of St. Matthew. St. Matthew, chapter 24. St. Matthew chapter 24 and verse number one reads as thus. Uh, first of all, I forgot. I want to just honor uh, our leadership here. We thank God for his presence and we thank God for our wife and our Pastor Duck and Sister Louise and our deacons, our ministry team and our praise team. And we thank God for all of you. Amen. That have come and our family and our friends. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Uh, in Jesus, verse Matthew 24, verse number one, it says, And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, there is, shall not be one left, one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. 
And his disciples came unto him of the Mount of Olives. The disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world? In verse number four, Jesus said and answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Amen. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. We want to turn it over to our praise team. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. We just thank God for his presence today, Father. We thank you, Father. It's praise and worship time in the sanctuary. Amen. It's praise and worship time in the sanctuary. Amen. We come to lift up the name of the Lord because you are worthy. Amen. Hallelujah. We bless your name, Jesus. I'm chasing that. Not 
ashamed to say that we need you more. We need your presence every day. We need you more and more. Say more and more. More and more. Hallelujah, Jesus. You're worthy to be praised, Father. And we're forever needing your presence. Amen. There's not a day that goes by that we do not need your presence. Amen. Amen. We bless you, Father, because in your presence, there's fullness of joy, Father. We can gain our strength from you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you today, Father. You're worthy. You're holy. Thank you, Jesus. And we bless you, Jesus. You are my strength, strength like no other, strength like no other, and it reaches to me. You are my strength. Strength like no other, strength like no other, and it reaches to me. Say, You are my strength, you are my strength, yeah, strength like. Oh, 
bird and it reaches to me you are our strength yes you are strength like no other strength like no other and it reaches to me in the fullness of the fullness of the fullness of your in the power of yeah yeah you live you live me up said I'm coming up there you lift me up in the fullness of that today he'll never walk out on you come on no never no never he'll never walk out on you let us worship him in the sanctuary I'm a winner. You are going to 
my witnesses in the house. You all got to be witnesses in the house. And you Come on and give the Lord a praise. Come on and give the Lord a praise. If you're a believer, come on and give the Lord a praise. If you've been baptized in his name, come on and give the Lord a praise. If you're thankful, if you're thankful, if you're thankful, come on and give him a praise. If he's your way maker, if he's your way maker, you ought to give the Lord a praise. Ah, hallelujah. We certainly do praise him. For if it had not been for the Lord on our side, there's no telling where we would be. If the Lord had not been on our side, thank you, there's no telling where we would be. Do we believe that today? Do we believe that today? It's not you keeping yourself. Ah, it's not you keeping yourself alive. It's the Lord. In him we live, move, and have our being. So we certainly do praise God for our praise and our worship team. And we certainly do thank God for his grace and his mercy and his services that we had this far. Truly, God has, has done tremendous things through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we certainly do praise and honor him for it. Amen? Thank you, Lord. And uh, we certainly do thank God uh, for Darius Mims being in our midst on today. Amen. Got one of my favorite colors on, the peach. Amen. Matching uh, my great uh, niece. <laughs> thank you, Lord. I was telling Pastor Doug, said, all these babies coming in. Thank you, Lord. I'm putting faces with faces. And I said, oh, okay, yeah. Thank you, Lord. So we do certainly do thank God uh, for each and every one of you. Amen. And by way of announcement, um, our global mission leader, uh, Sister Louise Davis. Won't you stand there, Sister Louise? Amen. And the global mission was, is having a rice bowl drive through August 1st through October 1st. And uh, please fill the rice bowl.
Lord is doing. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is the Lord, Brother Steve. Give God the praise and let us stand to our feet. Hallelujah. We have a treat for you on today. Uh, none other than our Pastor Elois Dunn will bring forth the word of the Lord. Let us receive it with a hearty amen. Uh, oh, give thanks. For he is good. Yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, yes, he is good. The Lord is worthy, worthy, yes, he is good, yes, he is good. The Lord is worthy, he's worthy. Unto the Lord, for He is good. Yes, He is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good. Yes, He is good. The Lord is worthy. Worthy. 
good. Hallelujah. How many know that the Lord is good? And he's worthy to be praised. Amen. He woke us up this morning, started us on our way. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't know what I'd do without the Lord in my life. Amen. He's been good all down through the years. Amen. Amen. He saved our souls. He filled us with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. And we still have a mind to serve him. Amen. And for that, we're eternally grateful. Amen. Amen. We had a beautiful Sunday school this morning. It was just a few of us out, but it was so good. Amen. Amen. It was so good that I thought I wouldn't have anything to preach. Amen. Amen. Because Pastor Sunday School, I didn't even know what the Sunday School was going to be about. And I came in and he said where it was. And I'm like, oh, my goodness. That's it. That's it. That was the base scripture that I wanted to use for the sermon. Amen. But we had a beautiful Sunday School encouraging everyone to come out. Uh, I don't know if he's going to change the hour for that, but it's currently at 9 o'clock. Amen. And it's only like a half an hour, and then we start our morning service. Amen? Amen. So come on out. It's a school of higher learning. Amen? Amen. Some good things were said. Amen? Amen. We're not going to hold your attention too long today. Amen? I want you to turn with me to the first, first Samuel chapter 17. Father, we come before you in the mighty name of Jesus. We ask the Lord that you'll bless Lord, send your help, send your anointing in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. 1 Samuel chapter 17. First of all, I'd like to give honor to my bishop, amen. Ooh, that sounds so good, my bishop. Amen. Bishop Frankie L. Quinn, amen. A man who's well deserving of that title, amen. He's a good, good shepherd, amen. Amen. Give honor to First Lady Tracy Quinn. Amen. Give honor to Mother Louise Davis. And I give honor to all of you. Amen. 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 I'm going to start reading at 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 1. Now the Philistines gathered together their armies to battle and were gathered together at Shoka, which belongeth to Judah and pitched between Shoka and Azekah and Ephes Damon. And Saul and the men of Israel were gathered together and pitched by the valley of Elah and set the battle in array against the Philistines. And the Philistines stood on the mountain on the one side, and Israel stood on a mountain on the other side. And there was a valley between them. And there went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath of, of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. And he had an helmet of brass upon his head, and he was armed with a coat of mail. And the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of brass. And he had greaves of brass upon his legs and a target of brass between his shoulders. And the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam, and his spear's head weighed 600 shekels of iron. And one bearing a shield went before him, and he stood and cried unto the armies of Israel and said unto them, Why are ye come out to set your battle in array? Am not I a Philistine and ye servants to Saul? Choose you a man for you and let him come down to me. If he be able to fight with me and to kill me, then we will be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then shall ye be our servants and serve us. And the Philistines said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Give me a man. Hallelujah. Isn't that something usually that people always say, give me something, give me something. We even say, Lord, give me a word. Amen. We even say, Lord, give me this, give me that. But our subject to this afternoon or this morning, it isn't afternoon yet, this morning is, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Our subject is events 
and appointments. Events and appointments. Thank you, Jesus. We all have events in our lives. Some of our events are better than others. Some of them are happy events. Some are sad events. Some are events that we just dread going through. Amen? Most of our events, we like to take the happy ones. We don't, we dread going through something that's going to take us out of our comfort zone. Amen? We're looking here. I was thinking about when I read this scripture, I was thinking about when I was raised up in the church before I got into the apostolic church. I went to a Baptist church all my life. And where we were raised, we were always taught doctrine. We knew doctrine, but we didn't know anything about the word of God. Amen. We just knew it as the word of God. Amen. We didn't know anything about the Holy Ghost. We didn't know anything about what God can, what the miracles that God is able to perform in your life. But there are always events that precedes your appointments. Amen. You have to survive your event in order to arrive at your appointment. If you don't survive the event, you'll never get to the appointment or to the place where God desires to have you to be. You have to uh, uh, survive that uh, uh, event. Sometimes the events will cause us to fall on our knees day and night. Sometimes the events will cause us to fast and pray for weeks. Sometimes the events will cause us to call friends and ask for prayer. Sometimes the events will cause us to call on God like we never called on him before. But the events have got to be in your life. Amen. No one on this earth is going to go through this life without going through some events. Everybody has appointments. Everybody has appointments. We have all kind of appointments. We have doctor's appointments. We have dental appointments. We have appointments to come to church, to meetings and different things. But no matter what, you have an appointment. Amen? David in our scripture was being anointed by God with a, for an event. All the events that were going to happen in his life. David went through life being a shepherd boy. He was always out in the field tending the sheep. And God said to him, because he was such a, a man after God's own heart, because David was constantly in the field thinking about the Lord and writing psalms. And one of my favorite, the 23rd Psalms, amen? David was anointed by God for events so that those events could take him to his appointment. And the events that God had in David's life was him being out in the field, not being with his family. Another event, he killed a bear. He killed a lion, protecting his sheep, amen? And all those events gave him the confidence that he needed to have in God so that when the time of his appointment came, he would be able to make that appointment. And David's appointment was Goliath. He didn't know what his appointment was. He didn't know why God was strengthening him and building him up and getting him ready. But his appointment was to kill Goliath. Amen? Now, I'm not saying we're going to have to kill somebody. Even though we do sometimes, we kill people, we murder them with our mouths, with our sayings, you know, with things we say or do. But Goliath's appointment was to kill Goliath. He had killed already the lion and the bear. So that was enough confidence that God had given him and built him up in to know that his God was able to kill Goliath for him. You see, David had so much confidence, he made a decree to Goliath. He said, this God, in other words, that I serve, this day he going to give me your hand. Your head, I'm a, a, your, your head gonna come in my hand today. Now it's something when you can talk strong like that. You have to know that your God is able, amen? You have to know that God is gonna bring you out no matter what because once you decree what God can do, oh, he gets, a, it, it, he pops buttons, so I got to do this. 
But if you're so timid and afraid, he wants you not to be afraid. He wants you to be courageous. Amen? He wants you to know that I'm your God. It be still sometimes. Sometimes we get in such a hurry going through the different events in our lives. Sometimes the events have us so where we can't even pray. The events have us so where we can't even think straight. Amen? But God. Amen? God will never leave us, never forsake us. Like the song says, he'll never walk out on you. No, never. Amen? There is a time and a season for all of your events. There is a time and a season for all of your appointments. Saul's fight, this was really Saul's fight with Goliath because he was the king. He should have stood up. But God had anointed David. Amen? God didn't anoint Saul for this appointment. He anointed David for this appointment. So sometimes you go through things and you wonder, Lord, why me? Because it was you that God anointed to go through that those events. And it's you that God has anointed to come through for that appointment at that time. It's your time to let folks see Jesus. It's your time to let your light shine. It's your time to let them see what the Lord can do in your life. And it's your time to let God get the glory out of your life. Amen? There's a time and there's a season. The devil gets in every event. And he doesn't want God to get the glory. Nor does he want you to get the victory. So the devil gets in there and blocks all kinds of ways. Where God has made the way, he starts to block it. But you've got to take the word of God and unblock every blockade that's in your life because you got to get through those events in order to get to the appointment. Amen? God knows you're able because he's already anointed you for that appointment. You've just got to walk on through that. Amen? Notice that the scripture said this army was on one mountain. And they were on another mountain. That way they were face to face with each other. Amen. But then there was a, a valley in between them. And you know, so, uh, Goliath said, send a man down here to me. Why would you go in the valley to fight somebody? Why would you want to be so low that he's right with you and can fight with you? Uh-uh. You want to stay on the mountaintop. You want to stay where the sun is, up high, amen? Because the Son of God has the power to bring you out. But Goliath tried to get David to get him to bring David down in the valley. David said, no, I can't come in the valley. Your events sometimes will make you wonder sometimes, why am I going through this? Lord, why? But only God knows why. But when you come through that event and you come out on the other side after the appointment, there is always a blessing after this. Amen? The song that they sang uh, uh, for the uh, council conference, after this, I thought that was beautiful. That was the first time I'd heard it. After this, amen? But after you have suffered a while, after you've gone through a series of events, after you met all your appointments, then comes the blessings, amen? Because God sent Jesus to bless you, not to harm you, not to do anything to hurt you, but to bring you to your expected end, amen? And you know what? We're always trying to prove something to somebody. You don't have to prove nothing to nobody, amen? Just live right yourself. Live holy so that God can take you through the events so that you can make your appointments and come out on the other side. My mind goes to Joseph. He had so many events in his life. First of all, his brothers were jealous of him. They hated him. Hated the man for no reason at all. Hallelujah. How many of us have ever hated someone for no reason at all? You just hate them just 
just because they were who they are. Hallelujah. But Joseph was put in the pit. They went back and told his father that an animal had killed him. Then he was sold. Then he went to the palace. But look at how, how God did Joseph. He gave him a little confidence because he didn't let him stay in that pit. You won't always stay in the pit, even if you feel like you're in the pit. Amen? He let him get out of the pit, put him in the palace. Oh, Joseph's all, he feels good now, knowing that God, he's, he's going to do what he said. Yeah, uh-huh, mm-hmm. Because God said, you, your, your family is going to bow down to you, Joseph. They're going to give obeisance to you. But when he told his family that, they didn't want to accept it. Amen? We're going to bow down to you. Did not God say he bring your enemies to your footstool? His brothers were his enemies. And they had to be brought to his footstool. Amen? So Joseph was thrown in, in the palace. Doing good. You see, sometimes we think we're doing good when everything's going well. And then you are. You really are. But that's the time you need to be praying. That's the time you need to be seeking God. Because all, it, it's just like all things are going well, all things will start to fall apart. All things will start to get on your nerves. All things will start to bother you. So you need to pray while things are going well with you. Joseph didn't know about his appointment because God had only shown him in a dream what was going to happen, that they were all going to bow down to him. But God did let him see all the events. He had to go to prison. When he got to prison, he met the butler and the baker. But notice his attitude never changed towards God. He didn't start to murmur and complain when he got in jail. He was talking to them about what God can do and the dreams that, that God has showed him. So when the butler and the baker heard it, they thought, hmm, this man, he can interpret dreams. Okay, so we'll tell him our dream. You tell him yours, I'll tell him mine. So they told him the dreams. He interpreted them. And by the time... He told them what was going to happen. It had actually happened. And he told them, don't forget me. <coughs> don't forget me. When you get your freedom, don't forget me. Tell the king about me. What, don't, do you know that people, once they get free, and once they get to doing what they want to do, and they get happy, and they get their life on track back again, people forget about you. They forget. And when you see him, you say, well, did you tell so-and-so about me? Oh, I forgot. I was, I was so elated getting out myself. I forgot. But the king had a dream. God caused him to have a dream. And no one could interpret it. And look at God now. Joseph, all those events he's going through. King heard about him, said, go get him. Send for that. He sent for him. He came up. He told the king the meaning of his dream. Dream came true. King gave him his leadership place back. And, 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 and look at that. His brothers, finally, they're having a, a, a famine in the land. Now, what? Look, look at God working. We can't see God working sometimes because we're so busy thinking about our problem, thinking about the event we're going through. We're so busy thinking about that that we can't see God moving in the situation. Joseph was so busy wondering about what had happened to his family that he couldn't see where he was really actually going. Amen? Sometimes you got to forget about the problem. Don't even pray the problem. Amen? Pray the want. Pray the need. Amen? Forget the problem. God is able to solve the problem. You have to pray the want. But Joseph finally, brothers come. He meets them. He knows it's them. Haven't seen them in years, but he remembers them. And he looks at them, and he just wants to break down. You ever meet somebody, and you haven't seen them in a long time, and you just want to, you, you're so glad to see them, you just want to break down and cry. 
or you do cry tears sometimes because you're so happy to see him. But he was so happy to see him, he had to go in his uh, a separate room and just cry. Give out his heart to God. I no doubt he was thanking God for letting him see his kinfolk again. Amen? And, and God it let him, he came on out of the room. And his brothers standing there, they, they thought, well, this man going to surely kill us. But Joseph told them, y'all are my brothers. Oh, I guess they started quaking. You know how you quake with fear? Oh, God, Joseph's going to kill us. We tried to kill him. We sold him. We did this to him. But Joseph didn't have that kind of a mind. He still had a godly mind. He, he told him, he asked him, is my father still alive? You see, he loved his kinfolk so much. It didn't matter all the events he had been through. He still had the love of God down in his heart. No matter what you go through in this life, you've got to keep the love of God down in your heart. You can't have any ill against anyone, against anybody. Amen? No matter how they talk about you, no matter how they treat you, you still got to have the love of God down in your heart enough to keep on loving them. Amen? You got to learn to love the unlovable. Hallelujah. So Joseph did not know that his appointment was to save Egypt and his family, amen, from the famine. A lot of times we go through different things and we ask God, Lord, why? You say, Lord, I've, I've been in the church my whole life. Why, why am I going through this? Well, you've been in the church your whole life. But has the church been in you your whole life? That's why you have the series of events. God is trying to get the church in you. You've been in the church all your life. My mother took us to the church when we were yay big. And we were always at church. But church never really gets in us. Because you you're not paying attention to that. You're not paying attention to the events that are going on in your life. Think about it. From, from as, as far as you can remember, there's always been something happening in your life. And there's always been something that you had to do at the end of that event. Esther didn't know that her mom and dad dying was an event in her life that would take her to her appointment. She had to go live with Uncle Mordecai. Sometimes you have children and the parents pass and, and they, the children have to be passed on to a family member. There's a reason. Esther was passed on to Uncle Mordecai. And she became queen to the king just so she could make an appointment. Amen? And she didn't want to make that appointment because she could have gotten killed. She walked into the king, and, 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 and you're not supposed to go into the king unless you were invited. Certain places right here in the United States, you better not go into it unless you're invited where these gangs are, you have to be invited in. And Esther was in the same position. She said, if I perish, I perish. But I'm going in to see the king. Because I realize this is an appointment from God. I've got to save my people. And the one that set up Mordecai, Haman, he built a gallows, wanted him to hang. Oh, he just couldn't wait to see him hang. He ended hang, get, getting hanged on it himself. So watch what you think. Watch what you desire. Remember, the scripture said we all, none of us are perfect. We've all done something wrong in the events of our lives. None of us have been perfect in God's sight. 
But we have to have mercy on one another. If there's somebody in here that's had a perfect life since you've been in holiness and cried out a father, let's stand up now and give us that testimony. We want to hear that testimony. You never did nothing wrong in your life. Always been a goody two-shoes. You know, I used to, I'm saying that because I used to do that too. I used to judge. Mm -hmm. The different events were going on in different people's lives. I judged. And I didn't have no reason to. I didn't make you. God did. You can't judge anything you didn't create or you didn't make. When I was in high school, I made this little ugly ashtray for my mother out of clay. You know how they used to give you clay and you mold it and they put it in the fire oven and, 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 and turn it and it, it gets, you put a little glaze on it and it, it comes out real pretty in a pretty color. But that was the ugliest ashtray. And I could say it's ugly because I made it. But I didn't want my classmates saying that's so ugly. Let me say it's ugly. I made that. That's the same way God is. He said, whatever you judge my servant by, the same judgment is going to come back to you. So you got to have events in your life. The events bring you to the appointments that God has for you in your life. Every one of us is going to go through some things. He said, arm yourselves to suffer. He said, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered them out of them all. Then he tells you, don't be weary in well-doing, for in due season you'll reap if you faint not. It ain't no time to faint, saints. It's time to get closer to the Lord. He said, draw nigh to me and I'll draw nigh to you. Seek the kingdom first and its righteousness. And all these other things will be added unto you. Events and appointments. We've all got them. Nobody that's living is going to make it through this world without events in your life, tests and trials, situations, circumstances, things that you have to go through. But you got to always stay in God's face. Not just when it happens. It's kind of late then because you ain't going to know what to do. Stay in the word of God and stay on your knees so that when something comes, you'll know how to handle it. Right away, God will be there. He'll give you a word how to handle that thing. And if you don't think God can use you with events and appointments, look at Noah. He was a drunk. God had him build an ark. And he built that ark too. Abraham was too old, but he had a baby. Isaac was a daydreamer. Jacob was a liar. Leah was ugly. Joseph was abused. Moses had a stuttering problem. Gideon, he was afraid. Samson was a womanizer. Rahab, she was a prostitute. (laughs) Jeremiah and Timothy were too young. David had an affair, and he was a murderer. Elijah was suicidal. Isaiah preached naked. Jonah ran from God. Naomi was a widow. Job went bankrupt. John the Baptist ate bugs. Peter denied Christ. The disciples fell asleep while praying. The Samaritan woman was divorced. 
Zacchaeus was too small. <laughs> Paul was too religious. <laughs> and Timothy had an ulcer. And Lazarus was dead. So if you think God ain't going to use you in some events and appointments, think again, amen? Think again. He will use you. He will take you through them. Amen? Hallelujah. So as you go through these events in your life, know that God has the appointment waiting on you. Amen? Because you just don't go through something for nothing. There's always an ending. Amen? But remember, the end of the thing is better than the beginning. Amen? God knows the end from the beginning. You say, how, does he, how in the world does he know the end from the beginning? Because he's in control. Because he's in complete control. He can change it if he want. He can buffer it if he want for you. He can turn it around for you if he want. But he will use you in events so that he can bring you to your appointments. Pray my strength in the Lord. Beautiful message. Amen. Give God a praise. Thank you, Lord. We're looking, looking to get over our events to lead us to our appointments. And that scripture is so true. It's so true. That's the way God does things. Amen. So that he can receive all glory and honor and praise. Come on, just give the Lord one more praise. And if there's anybody out there that wants to get baptized in the name of Jesus, we do have water and clothes for you to change into. And uh, one of our ministers will put you down in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. So let us stand to our feet. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And remember that our picnic is on, uh, it's on next week. Uh, let us come. What is it? Grab and go, sip and dip, picnic. Amen. So let us come together and fellowship. And I uh, just want to meet with the media team after service here just briefly. And we certainly do thank God for the anointing. We thank God for this word that has gone forward. And in that word, as I was listening intently, there's enough there for each and every one of us to grab and to glean on. And to don't think that what you're going through is not leading you somewhere. Amen. Never think that what God has you in is not bringing you out of something. Amen. Because God, God is an awesome God. Hallelujah. So cast not away your confidence, which have great recompense of reward. For you have need of patience that after you have gone through this, amen, after you have suffered a while, God will bring you out. Amen. Amen. So let us uplifted hands. Gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for this anointing. We thank you for this word that we have heard on today. We thank you for the fellowship that we have one toward another. Lord, continue to encourage our hearts as we move from this place, but never from your presence. Give us that mind and that heart to do your most perfect will. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling, to present you faultless before his presence with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, to him be glory both now and forever. In Jesus' name, amen.